guys, welcome back to another episode of Sewing 101. So this time we're going to just practice some simple um, sewing techniques, some basic things so that as you guys go forward with your sewing and experimenting, especially in regards to your mixed media, which is the primary focus of this Sewing 101 series. Um, that you'll have a few different techniques under your belt using just a basic machine, nothing fancy. Um, if you want proper dressmaking tutorials, I really, really recommend that you go to um, uh, YouTube channels like Stitchless TV. Um, I'm going to set this to not go to sleep. Okay which I forgot to do before I turned the camera on and I'm not going to turn it off now. All right, so I really recommend that you go to um, channels like Stitchless TV. I'll try to re put the link in the description below. She got a really great tutorial on, on um, garment making and spe specifically. Um, f for us, for what we're doing, we're mo mostly um, using it in conjunction with our mixed media, making journal covers and that sort of thing. But I want to show you some basic stuff. So I think we're going to start making a little a sort of a so our own sewing reference book. Um, so um, showcasing different stitches, something kind of like what you would probably do in home ec in school. So what you'll need is some um, index cards or card stock cut down to size for your journal. In this case, these are, um, I think these are four by six. Let's see. Yeah, these are four by six. Um, I have a, a lot of these because when you buy them, um, these are blank ones at sta like Staples. You can't just get one pack of them. You get like six packs of them. So I have a lot of these. So we're going to use these. Um, so you'll need one of these for each page and you're going to need some fabric, just simple woven like cotton fabric cut to about the same size as your cards. It can be a little bit bigger or smaller, but around the same size as your cards and you'll need one sheet of fabric for each technique. Um, I don't know for sure how many techniques we're going to do as we go along. There might be more than one episode of this, so as we go along you might need more fabric and that's fine. Ideally you want a fabric with a really clear, distinct right side and a wrong side. Mine do is not, I can tell which side is the wrong and right side, you guys probably can't. Um, one side of the fabric has, let's see, what, there we go, has a much clearer, sharper copy of the pattern on it than the other. Um, but for you, I would recommend that you use some kind of a fabric that maybe is even white on the back where it's printed, the fabric, the um, design is printed on the fabric and it's just white on the back. It'd be easier. You're going to need some scissors, fabric scissors, where are you? There we go. Some pinking shears, maybe. A seam ripper, a small four inch zipper, a hole punch, some pins, and this is called fray check. It's a fabric um, glue. It's basically glue. It stops fraying. It, when it dries clear and when you wash it, you can't tell it's even there. All right, so let's get started. And we're going to use our little Janome, which I've been promising to bring out to, for you guys for quite a while. Um, this is just a little basic Janome new home sewing machine. It um, You can't really adjust the stitch length. It has some presets. It only does straight and zigzag. Um, it is, um, and it only does so many things. You can't do, you know, buttonholes easily or any of that stuff on it. This is a plain basic machine. This is the one I do lots of mixed media on and sew paper on and that sort of thing. I don't usually use my big machine. So... That being said, you can also use this for basic sewing, which we'll talk about. There is a website, you can see my iPad right there, called Sew Delicious, and it seems to be a really good um, website for lots of different things. Um, they have one page with just different types of seams on it and how to, how to make them. So if you want good reference material, I do recommend that you go there. All right, now, that being said, we're going to just do a basic seam. Um, seam. Seam, seam, seam. Um, this is my right side. So I'm going to take my little piece of fabric. I'm going to fold it in half lengthwise. I'm going to cut it in half. There we go. All right. We're going to do a basic seam. Most of your commercial sewing patterns have a five in five eighths inch seam allowance, meaning they want you to sew in from the cut edge five eighths of an inch. Um, we mix media artists, we break rules. So unless you're dressmaking it and you're following a commercial pattern, then you can just do whatever kind of seam allowance you want. 
I'm going to use the edge of my um, plate here as a guide. I don't know, that's about a half an inch, I think. I don't think it's quite five eighths, but I'm going to use it as a guide. I have, let's see, what do I have this set on? This is set on a straight stitch, um, and it's set on B, so it's kind of a small one. I think I want to go a little bit bigger, so we're going to go to C. So we're going to just turn the dial to C. It's already threaded, and I already have bobbin thread in here. I do recommend that if you have um, dark fabric, use light thread. If you have light fabric, use dark thread. Use something that's a different color than your fabric so that you can see your stitches. This is supposed to be a reference book. You want to be able to see your stitches so you can see. Re try to remember what you've done. All right, so this machine doesn't have any lights on it. You can see it's dark down here. My bigger machine has a light on it. Yeah, and that's one of the drawbacks, but I'm okay with it. All right, so I'm going to hold my threads and get started. Then I'm going to hit my back button here and then go forward again. And that'll lock my stitches in. I'm going to keep the cut edge of the fabric with that edge of the plate. Now this machine cannot go fast. It does not go fast. You can't make it go fast. That is fast for this machine. Okay. Cut our threads. That's a basic, basic seam. Yeah. So I'm going to press this open and I'll be right back. Okay, I've pressed it open. And there's only two times I use an iron one if I'm crafting and two if I'm going to a funeral. Because <laughs> honestly, I don't use an iron. Uh, but we're crafting, sort of. So we've got the iron. I've got the iron here in the sewing room. I pulled it out of the laundry room. So here I pressed it open flat, and generally when you do a seam like that, that's what you do. You press it open flat, one piece on either side, and then you can, there's lots of different ways to finish this raw edge of this seam so that it doesn't continue to fray and ravel. You of course can leave it, and we're mixed media artists, so we might choose to do that. Um, you can, of course, stitch along the edge like with a zigzag, or you can um, get these pinking shears, which are ba basically a zigzag bladed scissor. and cut along the edge there. Can you see that? And that gives you an interesting finish. So now, as we do each one of our little samples, what I want to do is I'm going to take out my tiny attacher. And I'm going to staple them just at the top to the card. Like that, three staples across and you can lift it up and look both sides so that's why you would do that and I want you to journal on the back um, any details about the seam this is a plain seam Plain seam, plain seam with a zigzag, right? So let's do another one. We've got another card here. And another piece of fabric. You want to try to find your right side. I, like I said, this is not great fabric for this. I want you guys to get a fabric that has a very clear and distinct right pretty side and wrong ugly side and use that. We're going to cut it in half vertically again and again we're going to stitch it just like we did before make sure the needle in your machine is appropriate to the kind of fabric that you're stitching on meaning that if you have a thicker fabric you have a thicker needle, if you have a thinner fabric you have a thinner needle. Um, we're actually going to, let's do one more because I have two, I can do two of these quickly here. Let's do another one.
actually, I take that back. We're gonna need one more, so we'll do three. I just saw thought of one more. There was, oops, cloud. going to close that because I lost my bookmark. But so delicious. Okay, let's do one more. <laughs> that might not be enough, but that we'll find out in a second. Oops, wrong scissors. Don't use your pinking shears on fabric on um, paper if you intend on using them on fabric because it'll dull the scissors really quick and they are really difficult if not impossible to sharpen. So don't do that. All right. So let's. I'm going to press all of these open and I may actually need one more of them. Um, but I, if that's the case, I'll be right back. Okay. So now we have another plain seam that's pressed flat open on either side. <clears throat> and we're going to flip it over to the right side of the fabric and we're going to use that seam where the two fabrics join as a guide and we are going to make sure that um, the edge of the presser foot runs along that seam. It's to the left of my presser foot, this foot here. I'm going to hold my threads and I'm going to stitch, find my pedal, oh there it is. Now I'm not sewing going back and forth, but in a real garment or if you, you know, paper, you want to make sure the stitches don't unravel, then you want to go back and forth at the beginning of the end. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm flipping the fabric over so the stitching line I just made is to the left of my needle and foot. And I'm going to again run the left side of that presser foot along the seam where the two fabric pieces join. Okay, and now we have a nice topped stitched seam. Where are you? There you are, right? So again, we're gonna take that and take our card and we're going to staple it to our card so we'll be able to see exactly what we did and how we did it, right? Now we have another one and in this case, this plain seam, I pressed the whole, both pieces over to one side. I'm going to take these two flaps and I'm gonna take one of them and I am going to trim it down to at least half, if not three quarters, of what it is. So one side is significantly longer than the other. And then I'm going to top stitch, use a row of existing stitching as a guide. called a welted seam. I keep picking up the wrong scissors. Right? So you have that interior little piece that's hidden. Uh, sometimes when they do these kind of seams they take this fabric that's going to show and they, they um, finish the edge with stitching with zigzag or you could pink the edge. Right. So we'll take this one and we'll put it on a card. Like that. Now we're going to take another one. Now we have this one, and this is one's pressed over, but it really shouldn't be. Um, I'm going to fix that in a minute. We're going to take this whole seam, both pieces, 
and we're going to trim all of it down to about a quarter or eighth of an inch. Give it a really good haircut. Yep. Then we are going to take it and fold it back the other way and fold it along the seam where the two pieces of fabric are joined. And again, using our presser foot as a guide and running that, that seam along the outside edge of the presser foot or like um, a, a teeny bit away, 32nd, not, not as even a 16th, less than that of an inch. Okay. Now, when you do this kind of seam, you want to do it with wrong sides together when you start at first. And when you do the final se um, seam, then when you open it, this is the right side. But you have this, it's called a French seam, where the whole of the fabric is all enclosed inside. There's a little pocket there now. So you would sew it first wrong sides together, then you would trim the seam, then you would fold it back right sides together, sew it again, and then when you're done, you have a nice right sides together um, seam with the stitches all completely hidden and enclosed and nothing is going to ravel. Then there's the flat felled seam, is what it's called. <laughs> this is the seam you see on your blue jeans. And I had to, that's why I found so delicious, because I couldn't for the life of me remember what it was called. So I had to go look it up, and I know I have a book out in the living room that has it in there, but I couldn't find it. So you want to sew your seam, and you could do this from either side. So you could do your fabric and sew it wrong sides, uh, right, wrong sides together, so you're doing this whole thing from the right side. That's the best way. Um, you could do it the other way, but this is the easiest way. So again, you sew your fabric wrong sides together. So when you have your seam with your raw edges, this is the pretty side of the fabric facing up. You've taken one half of your seam and you've trimmed it down low. I'm going to go press this other um, side of the seam around the cut edge of fabric like this. And I'm going to press it flat and I'll be right back. <laughs> 